three countries, three distinct lifestyles, and one huge question. Where's the best place for expats to live in Southeast Asia in 2024? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and I've been traveling around the world since 2018 and I've lived in Vietnam for the past four years. And in today's video, we are continuing our journey and our deep dive on Southeast Asian countries for expats to live. In this video, we will compare the countries of Indonesia, Laos, and Cambodia. Whether you're craving city life, island escape, or a slower pace, I've got all the information you'll need in this video. But here's the kicker. There's one major factor that could make or break your decision, so stick around to find out. Before we get started, don't forget to check out our YouTube memberships. They're new, and all you have to do is click the join button below, and as a member, you'll get early access to videos that I drop, as well as exclusive behind the scenes content and much, much more. First, let's break down the quality of life across these three countries, and you might be surprised which one offers the lifestyle that you're dreaming of. Indonesia is a land of diversity. Whether you're seeking the vibrant energy of a city or the tranquility of island life, Indonesia has it all. In Jakarta, the capital, you'll experience fast-paced city living with world-class shopping, restaurants, and nightlife. It's the hub for business, tech, and corporate jobs, but it comes with the hustle and the bustle of traffic and noise. But there's also Bali, the island paradise. Bali is a haven for surfers, digital nomads, and retirees. Here, you'll find a slower pace of life with yoga retreats, eco-friendly cafes, and beach bars, a stark contrast to Jakarta's city grind. Lao takes life at an entirely different speed. Imagine small cities, open spaces, and a strong connection to nature. Vientiane, the capital, has a much slower pace compared to Jakarta or Phnom Penh. The streets are quiet and the scenery is breathtaking. There's a little traffic and you'll feel the calm of the Buddhist lifestyle everywhere you go. If you're looking for peace and quiet, Lao offers that in all shapes and sizes. Finally, there's Cambodia, a country that offers the best of both worlds. While you can live in a laid back lifestyle in places like Siem Reap, Phnom Penh is the bustling heart of Cambodia. It's much more modern than Laos, but much smaller and more affordable than Jakarta. You'll find a growing number of modern conveniences here, like cafes, co-working spaces, and international restaurants, but with the charm of a country still very much connected to its history and traditions. But what's life without knowing how much it costs, right? Coming up next, we're breaking down the cost of living in these countries and you might be shocked by which one is the most affordable. Now let's talk about what everybody wants to know. Cost of living. Indonesia can be tricky. In Jakarta and Bali, rent can be steep in the popular areas, which costs ranging between 500 US dollar to 1500 US dollar per month. But move out to the rural region and you'll find much more affordable options. So what's the secret to living comfortably in Indonesia without breaking the bank? Laos is easily one of the most affordable countries in Southeast Asia. A one bedroom apartment in Vientiane costs between 300 US dollar to 500 US dollar per month. And if you live in rural areas, you can pay even less. Eating out is extremely cheap. Meals at local restaurants typically cost between $2 and $5. Utilities and transportation are also much cheaper here than in Indonesia or Cambodia, making Laos an ideal spot for budget conscious expats. Cambodia strikes a balance between affordability and modern amenities. Rent for a one bedroom apartment in Phnom Penh is around 400 US 
US to 700 US per month. And groceries and local dining are relatively cheap. Meals at a local restaurant cost between two US dollar and six US dollar, but international restaurants or expat targeted cafes can charge much, much more. Phnom Penh is more expensive than Vientiane, but still cheaper than Jakarta and Bali. If you're enjoying this breakdown and you want more tips on expat life here in Vietnam or Southeast Asia, don't forget to hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. Also, if you want early access to new videos and behind the scenes exclusive content, make sure you check out our YouTube memberships for those exclusive perks. Let's get back to the content. Up next, we're diving into one of the biggest perks of living abroad, food. And you won't believe how diverse the culinary scenes are in these countries. All right, let's get into food. Indonesia offers a culinary experience unlike any other from the spicy nasi goran to the rich flavors of rendang. Bali's food scene is also a mix of traditional and international. But here's the question. Can you really enjoy all that Indonesia has to offer on a budget? In Laos, the food is all about simplicity and flavor. Sticky rice, grilled meats, and fresh herbs dominate the cuisine. Local dishes like larb and tamak hung or papaya salad are staples. Cambodia's food is an exotic blend of Thai and Vietnamese and local flavors. The amak, a curry steamed in banana leaves, is a must try here. But the real question is, how does Cambodia's food scene hold up when it comes to availability and affordability for expats. And speaking of expats, what's it really like to build a community in each of these countries? We're diving into the expat community next, and there's one country that stands out. Living abroad is about more than just affordability. It's about finding your community. In Indonesia, places like Bali and Jakarta have well-established expat groups. Bali in particular has become a hub for digital nomads and retail but is the social scene really as open and inclusive as people say? In Laos, the expat community is much smaller and more tight-knit. In Vientiane and Luang Prabang, you'll find smaller close-knit circles in the expat community. But with such a small expat scene, could you feel isolated there? Cambodia offers a growing and diverse expat scene, especially in Phnom Penh and Siem Reap. The community is friendly and social events are common. But what's the reality of adjusting to life as an expat in Cambodia's rapidly changing environment? So feeling at home is great, but what about staying healthy? Let's compare the healthcare systems in these countries. There are some critical differences you need to know about. Healthcare can be a deal breaker for many expats. In Indonesia, particularly in Jakarta and Bali, private health hospitals offer good quality care, but they can be very pricey without insurance. But is it enough for serious medical needs or would you rather travel abroad? In Laos, healthcare is more limited, especially outside Vientiane, the capital. Many expats head to Thailand or Vietnam for serious medical care. But how often will you need to cross the border for treatment? And how does that affect your quality of life? Cambodia's healthcare system is improving with Phnom Penh having several private clinics and hospitals. But here's the catch. Many expats still choose to go to Thailand for anything beyond basic care. So is Cambodia ready to meet the healthcare needs of expats? Next up, let's talk about how easy it is to get around these countries. Transportation in each of these countries varies widely and you'll need to know what to expect before moving. Indonesia offers a mixed bag when it comes to transportation. In Jakarta, the Trans Jakarta bus system is efficient, but the traffic can be a nightmare. Meanwhile, in Bali, Bali relies heavily on motorbikes for transport. But is it really convenient for expats who don't want to navigate the chaotic streets? In Laos, 
public transport is limited with most people relying on tuk-tuks motorbikes and private taxis but can expats in Laos really get around easy or will transport become a daily hassle cambodia offers similar options with tuk-tuks and motos and buses being the most common ways to get around Phnom Penh has better infrastructure than rural areas, but how reliable is the transport system there really? But what about your safety? Moving to a new country is exciting, but knowing how safe it is will give you such a peace of mind. Safety is a big concern when moving abroad. Indonesia is generally safe, but you'll need to watch out for petty crimes, especially in Jakarta and Bali's tourist areas. But what other safety risks do you need to consider in Indonesia? In Laos, crime rates are incredibly low and most expats feel safe in both urban and rural areas. But could the laid back nature of Laos mean overlooking important safety precautions? Cambodia is relatively safe, but petty theft and scams are common in busy areas like Phnom Penh and Siem Reap, so make sure you be careful. How do you navigate these risks while enjoying life in Cambodia, right? Feeling safe is key, but what about job opportunities in these countries? Next, let's explore where you can work and thrive in these countries. Looking for job opportunities? Indonesia, especially in Bali and Jakarta, offers plenty of options for tourism, tech, teaching English, and business startups. Bali has become a hub for digital nomads, but what's the reality of working remotely from paradise? In Laos, job opportunities are more limited, focusing more on teaching, tourism, and NGO work. But does this smaller job market mean you'll struggle to find work, or does it offer a unique opportunity for expats? Cambodia is rapidly growing with job opportunities in tourism, teaching, NGOs and business ventures. As Cambodia modernizes, are the opportunities keeping pace with expat demands? Getting a job is one thing, but what about getting a visa? We'll dive into visa options next, and one country has a surprising advantage. Getting a visa can be a headache, but in Indonesia, you have several options, whether it's a business visa, a retirement visa, or a tourist visa. Bali makes it easy for expats, but is the visa system truly as flexible as it seems here? In Laos, the process is relatively simple with options for long-term tourist visas and business visas. But is the border run requirement a deal breaker for those wanting to stay long-term? Cambodia is known for its visa flexibility. Expats can get long-term tourist visas and retirement visas very easy. But how does Cambodia's visa system really compared to its neighbors when it comes to ease and affordability. Visas? Check. What about the weather? This next factor could be a game changer, especially if you're not a fan of extreme heat or humidity. Now let's talk about climate and weather, because where you live is only as good as the environment you wake up to every day. Indonesia is a tropical country with a distinct wet and dry season. In Jakarta, the humidity can be intense, where Bali enjoys more stable weather throughout the year. But could the heat and the humidity of the tropics start to wear down over time? In Laos, you'll find a similar tropical climate, but with cooler temperatures in the northern regions, especially during the dry season. Vientiane can get hot, but it's less humid than Jakarta or Phnom Penh. But how does Laos' seasonal climate affect your ability to enjoy outdoor activities year-round? Cambodia is hot and humid year-round, with heavy rains during the wet season and scorching heat during the dry season especially in Phnom Penh. The big question is, can you handle the intense Cambodian climate or will it push you indoors more often than you'd like? But weather isn't everything. You can communicate easily in these countries or is there a language barrier that could make daily life more difficult? Let's dive into language and communication next. Language can either make life easier or harder. In Indonesia, the official language is Bahasa Indonesia, but in popular expat destinations like Bali, 
English is widely spoken, so you don't have to worry about that. Still, if you're planning to live in more rural areas, is it enough to get by with just English or will you need to learn some Bahasa to truly integrate? In Lao, the official language is Lao. While English is spoken in tourist areas only, it's not as common as in Indonesia. Could the language barrier here make life more difficult if you don't know Lao? Or is it easy enough to navigate with basic phrases? Cambodia offers one of the easier language environments for expats. While the official language is Khmer, English is widely spoken in Phnom Penh and Siem Reap, especially among younger generations. But what happens if you travel outside the cities? Will English still be enough? Language is a big deal, but adapting to a new culture is just as important. So how easy is it to fit in and feel at home in these countries? Up next, we'll explore cultural adaptation. Adapting to local customs is crucial to a smooth expat experience. In Indonesia, especially in Bali, the culture is welcoming and relatively laid back. However, in more Muslim majority areas, respecting religious customs becomes more important. But how easy is it to strike a balance between embracing the local culture and maintaining your own lifestyle? In Lao, life is deeply connected to Buddhist traditions, which means everything moves slower and there's an emphasis on on mindfulness but could the peaceful introspective lifestyle here feel restrictive for someone seeking more excitement and activities Cambodia is a mix of traditional and modern customs Buddhism plays a key role in the daily life of the Cambodians but the laid-back atmosphere in cities like Phnom Penh makes it easy for expats to integrate but are there any unexpected cultural challenges Challenges that could make adopting to Cambodia a bit tricky. Now that we've covered cultural adaptation, let's talk about something a bit more personal, dating and relationships. How easy is it to meet women or men in these countries? And are there any cultural barriers you need to be aware of? Looking for love abroad? In Indonesia, especially in Bali and Jakarta, the dating scene is modern and diverse. Many expats and locals meet through social events and dating apps. But could traditional values in smaller towns and rural areas pose challenges for relationships? Or is it easier than it seems? Lao has a slower, more traditional approach to dating. The expat community is smaller, so forming relationships might take a little more time. But could this slower pace actually lead to deeper and more meaningful relationships? In Cambodia, dating is quite laid back, especially in cities like Phnom Penh, where English is widely spoken. But with Cambodia's deep-rooted cultural customs, could expats still face challenges when navigating relationships with the locals? Let me know in the comment section below which country that you're leaning towards. And if you found this video helpful, check out this video. If you're interested in finding out what Thailand, Vietnam, and the Philippines are like. See you on the next one.